everyone. I'm back. So it's been a long time since I last put out that video. That was back in July and here we are. Happy 2020. Um, so I apologize. This is way long overdue. This is my Kaplan video and I was finishing up my prereqs this past fall. I had to finish Chem 2 and microbiology and I have two little kids. So you know it's been crazy over here. Um, and now I'm just waiting on my applications and I'm taking like a computer class and a PE class, which are just institutional requirements here in at the school I go to. So, well, one of the schools, I'm actually applying to four schools. So I'm just trying to, you know, not put all my eggs in one basket, just throw my applications out there and hopefully one will stick at least. But anyway, I did really well in the Kaplan. So I got a 96 on the Kaplan and um, I should probably edit that tease and Hesse video because it's really embarrassing, but my phone was the wrong way on those videos. So hopefully this is a little more aesthetically pleasing to watch. Um, anyway, so let's go over the way the Kaplan is formatted. So it is 91 questions. There is 28 math and you get 45 minutes. There's 22 reading, you get 45 minutes. There's 20 science, you get 30 minutes. And there's 21 writing and you get 45 minutes. So I got 100 on the math and the reading. I got a 90 on the science, so I missed two. And then I got a 90 on the writing, so I also missed two there. Um, and then there is a critical thinking, which 16 of the 91 questions are critical thinking. And I don't know exactly which ones. Um, I missed one, so I got a 15 out of 16 on that, so I got a 94. Um, now, I don't believe that that's actually taken into your overall score, but the school can see it. It is printed out. They do give you a page with the Kaplan. You just print it out and you bring it in as part of your application. Um, now, so let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the, um, reading and the writing because I know that that is an area that a lot of people really seem to struggle with and there are not a lot of good resources for the Kaplan. Um, the Kaplan book, I don't think anybody would recommend it. Nobody at my school recommended it. Nobody on YouTube recommends it. It's just not really a good resource. It's not similar to the exam. I didn't even bother getting it. I was just, you know, I wasn't going to waste my money on that. Um, now, I will say that there are not, the resource I found that was the most helpful. So first of all, let me just preface this by saying that I took the T's and the HESI before I took the Kaplan. So I had already been studying quite a bit and, it's, and I do need to redo that T's video. I know it's embarrassing, it's long, I'm sorry forgive me, but um, I had been studying, or ready, I had been studying that ATI um, T's, the actual book, as well as doing the ATI T's secret books. Um, now, on top of that, I have just, I had just finished t taking Anatomy and Physiology 1 and Anatomy and Physiology 2. All right, with all that being said, the reading and the English on the Kaplan, it is strange. It's in paragraph form, so it's very, very similar to the HESI. So it's paragraphs. And on the English section, essentially, there'll be a sentence and there'll be options as to what's wrong, what needs to be fixed. This could be anything from you need to, it's in the wrong tense or the punctuation is wrong or the grammar itself is wrong or one of the words is wrong anything of that nature. Um, what it is very, very similar to is the ACT. So fortunately, my um, stepdaughter was taking the ACT and she gave me the ACT workout book. Now, I know these books are not cheap, so I am going to put a link below. Um, I actually found some sample English language usage practice tests online for the ACT and I think they give you like five tests free so I just went ahead and I did those first and let me tell you I did not do well on them I got like an 80 my goal is always to get a 90 or above so 
I was not really happy with getting an 80 on those practice tests for the English section, the English section, which is comparable to the writing section on the Kaplan. All right, so I definitely, I went ahead, I did all those. Once I started doing them, I started kind of getting a feel for what they were looking for. And then I went to the book and I started doing practice tests from the book. Um, and essentially I just did those over and over over and over so the English is comparable to the writing now let me tell you the ACT is more difficult so if you can do these you will be fine on the Kaplan you will be fine on the writing you will get the hang of it but just know that this is stuff we learned back in middle school maybe high school but a lot of it middle school you know and honestly I feel like a lot of the grammar is stuff that I don't necessarily like, I know to do it in my everyday writing, but I don't always, I can't always put a name to it that, oh, this is, you know, conjugation. All right, this is subject verb agreement. Um, and I, I talked a little bit about it in my tease video also. Um, which, again, I know that video is kind of long, but hopefully it, it does have some good content in it. Um, all right, and now the reading is also similar to the Hussey in the sense that it is paragraphs. So it's not like the T's where you're going to be asked um, to maybe read a map or something like that. No, this is strictly you're reading paragraphs and you're drawing conclusions based on what you're reading. All right, so again, ACT. Just go ahead and do the reading in the ACT, or if you have a book for the T's already, like the ATIT Secrets book, which is that yellow book, um, and I can I can link that below also. Um, that you can do the reading on there. You can do read the passages though. Just focus on reading the passages because the Kaplan is just passages, strictly passages. That's it. Reading and interpreting passages. All right, so now let's go, oh, let me show you another resource I use because for me and how I study, it really helps me to do practice tests. Like just doing practice problems, practice tests, that is so helpful. I went ahead and I did get this book because it was rec recommended on a site. Um, I don't know exactly which site, just me looking up different resources for this exam because there really are none. So this is KNAT and it's just, a bunch of practice tests. Now, this is not exactly like the exam itself, but it does, you know, it does go over grammar and that's helpful. You know, it goes over a little bit of basics, um, basics of writing, um, saying which verb should be removed. Um, it's, you know, goes over punctuation and it does a little bit of review for anatomy and physiology. It does um, a little bit of view, review for reading. And then it has a bunch of practice tests and that's what I liked. It's just good for me to do problems. They're not exactly the same, but they're similar enough that it's just good to have this information. It's just good to keep going over the information. So, you know, I thought, I, I think it was maybe $23, so, you know, it's worth it. To me, it is. Um, just to get some more questions and just have another review. All right. All right, so we've kind of gone over that. Now, let's, let's talk about the, so the math. The math is pretty, I mean, this is very straightforward, y'all. It is literally addition, subtraction, percents, fractions, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I really didn't, this isn't, I've always liked math, and I've always been good at math. This wasn't really something I needed to study. I did do a couple math questions in here just to make sure, but I had just taken the T's and the HESI, so I had done a ton of math, and on the HESI, we were not allowed to use a calculator, so I really had to be comfortable with, you know, doing one division even without a calculator but on the Kaplan you can use a calculator so it's easier it's much easier than the T's much easier than the HESI and you get a calculator and I don't think many people have trouble with the math so that's pretty straightforward now let's talk about the science so this is a bit strange so it's A and P and it's not strange because a lot of the questions are straightforward and I had just taken A and P one and two 
Now, this is 20 questions and it is all A and B. Um, however, there were a couple questions that stood out to me as being a bit odd. So, it is mostly on the cardiac, respiratory, and nervous systems. That is really where the focus of these questions are. Um, so I would say definitely, as far as disease-wise, it would be good to understand asthma, hypertension, hypotension, and gout, which is kind of random, but there is, there was a question on gout. Um, understand the sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system, so the autonomic nervous system, um, chemoreceptors, you know how you learned about like the carotid body that also has chemoreceptors that can help you regulate help you regulate your pH balance. It regulates a lot of the autonomic nervous system. Um, it, you know, can measure the CO2 content in your blood. So just things kind of know that because I feel like there were definitely some questions that sort of danced around that topic. Um, the respiratory system, that is important. Definitely study um, you know how um, the alveoli and then where gas exchange occurs, all that, which is in the alveoli, um, alveoli, pardon me. And um, they do talk a little bit about the immune system. So, um, you know, definitely brush up on white blood cells and the different types of white blood cells and their importance. Um, neurons, know a little bit about that, know a little bit about, um, and that's why I recommend taking a and 1 and 2 before you take this exam. Um, know a little bit, uh, just, you know, know about, um, just, it, it's not gonna ask you anything too detailed, but know overall, okay, you know, how neurons, you know, how they communicate with one another, also how certain chemicals play into that, because you know, it's not, it's an electrical, it's an electrical chemical gradient, right? So you're gonna wanna know electrically positive to negative, and then how that will release certain chemicals. So you don't really need to go into detail, but just understand the overview, the basics, of how the whole nervous system works um, and understand, I would say also, like I said before, chemoreceptors. Understand the differences between the somatic and the autonomic nervous system. Um, also, positive and negative feedback systems. So they're different, you know, in our body, like childbirth, it's a positive feedback system, okay? Most Systems are negative feedback. I think like blood clotting and childbirth are the two classic examples of positive feedback system. Um, so understand that. I believe there was a, a question related to that. Um, again, like I said with asthma, understand that there is a question related to that. Now, here is the biggest, biggest tip on science. Quizlet. Okay, y'all. Well, this is crazy, but I'm gonna bring my computer up here so I get this right, and I'll, I can link it also, hold on. So on Quizlet, there is, if you type in like Kaplan, and I actually found this information on Reddit, but if you type in Kaplan nursing, Science Quizlet. Oh, know the blood flow through the heart, cardiac. That's very important. Know the blood flow, how it flows through the heart. Um, I just had to put that interlude in there because it is important. Um, now, if you type that in, you will come up with flashcards, okay? Now, these flashcards on Quizlet Look for the ones that have like 25 terms in the set and you will, these questions, y'all, it's almost identical. It's very similar. Some of the questions are almost identical to the Kaplan itself. It is to the science portion of the Kaplan. Now, again, they could change it. They could change it. So don't go in there thinking, oh, this is 
definitely going to be on there. I've heard other people say that thus far they have not changed it, but at any time, you know, they, they could change it. But I have found that this was extremely similar. Um, and here's where it gets a bit weird. So some of the questions, y'all, some of the questions were a bit strange. Um, something, okay, so there was something that talked about changes in hearing, vision, increase in sensation and perception of temperatures. Now, I would think it would actually be a decrease, but this is aging. Well, it could be either. The answer, you'll see it on the flashcards. It's, it's really hard for me to explain because essentially, you know, it's multiple choice. Um, there was essentially a question that was saying, what causes changes? And it literally listed the five senses. And there were a couple answers that, honestly, they could have been right. I mean, there were a couple answers that seemed like they could be correct. So that was a weird one. And you'll see that on Quizlet. When you go to it, you'll see that question, um, which is very helpful because that'll help you on the exam. Um, and then the other one that was strange was, um, oh yeah, here we go. This is good to know to know a bit about, know the, the, even though it's mostly respiratory, cardiac, and nervous, there is some urinary also. Um, and understand the difference between intracellular, extracellular, and interstitial. Now, you know, know the basic function of a neuron, it's a cell of the nervous system, and you know, no, just, it would be great if you took A and P1 first, A and P1 and 2. Super helpful. Um, now, I'm gonna go to this other question that I felt was a bit, oh yes, okay, here, I remember it now. So, it asks if your heart rate is 56 BPM and your respirations are 20, um, essentially it's asking you what, they don't have this question here, but it's asking you what system is being activated. Okay, and it's, they say on the Quizlets and everything that the answer, and I believe that was the answer I put too, is a parasympathetic nervous system. And here's why that question is weird. It's because, okay, so I could see with the BPM being so low, it's the parasympathetic nervous system, right? But your breaths, your respirations are 20 per minute. That's on the high end of normal, right? That's just weird, but apparently the answer is parasympathetic. I mean, that's what, that's what it says on all these Quizlets and I for, I think I think that's what I put too and the reason I put it on the test was because um, it was because none of the other answers really fit and that's another trick that's that's gonna be my final tip do the answer that fits the best when it comes to stuff like that um, and sometimes they'll make it really obvious because none of the other answers will be even in the ballpark of anything that makes sense but Again, I did miss two in the science. It does not tell you which one you miss. Um, but that Quizlet, I will link it below. It's a wonderful resource and you'll find tons of questions on there and they're very similar. And even pay attention to the strange ones because those are very similar as well. So this video has already gotten really long because I tend to go off on tangents, trying to explain things. And I know I can be a bit long-winded, I'm not. I, I want to make sure I'm giving you as much detail and help as possible because, I mean, I really appreciated the help I got. So hopefully you're able to take something away from this. And thank you so much for watching. And I would love to make some other videos just in general about the process, studying, and etc. So y'all wish me luck on my applications, okay? And I'll... Let everyone know. But um, if you have any questions, please leave them below and I will put those links below. Happy 2020 everyone and um, y'all study hard, all right? All right, thanks for watching, bye.